So today is all about Composer and Visualize and really when to use each application. So there's a lot of what people like, people call it crossover between the two and it's not really. Um, so we're just trying to identify that and explain what the difference is between the two applications. Uh, if you look at both of them, you know, they're both able to make explosions. They're both able to make imagery. They're both able to make animation. Um, so why would you need both of them? And this really boils down to what the purpose of the application and its its outputs, its publications. So Composer is a very technical sort of output, which you can see from this image here, and visualizes a very polished, lifelike photorealism rendering. And we'll we'll dive into the deeper into the differences here as we as we progress through. So what's on the agenda? Really, it's uh, talking about the parallel workflow and how we can take our SOLIDWORKS CAD and bring it into both Composer and Visualize simultaneously. So we could have that from two different groups, two different people, or even the same person just jumping back and forth between the two. Um, but you don't have to wait for one process to finish before starting the other. They do work in parallel. And I'll be explaining that in a little bit further detail next. I've got a couple examples and customer stories here. Uh, just good to show what each software can do and how actual customers are using these these solutions uh, to you know just to uh, benefit their business then i want to go into the um the actual picks and clicks a little bit for the workflows um going from solidworks cad to both composer and visualize and how that looks okay so for the parallel workflow uh this 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 little image here, um, CAD Design 3D model that that is in this case SolidWorks. Just keep in mind that for both Composer and Visualize, the CAD modeler doesn't have to be SolidWorks. So if you have your SolidWorks design and you're importing step files, STL, or bringing an object or something like that that you need to to use for both of these applications, we can bring that in from SolidWorks, and we can also merge other file types into those publications. Uh, which is really cool, and it's super fast to do so. Okay, so for the Composer direction, by the way, these are both uh, happening at the same time. Uh, Composer is your technical output. So that's going to be BOM, uh, build material. It's going to be assembly instructions. So that's anything uh, procedural. It uh, doesn't have to be assembly. It could be disassembly or maintenance or um, on-site you know, installation or something like that. Uh, and then your procedural animations. I really like to draw focus to the word procedural uh, for Composer. That is what it's good at. That's what it's made for. Um, and then we can get into things like interactive. So for the BOM, uh, we can make an interactive online build materials, part list, assembly instructions, where you can click uh, a button and it goes to the next page. You can choose it to play video. Uh, open up drawings. There's a lot of really cool stuff we can do with that, and we'll, we'll show that in, in further detail. Then we get into the visualize portion of it. Now, visualize is that photorealism. It's uh, it's it's the high quality, polished look for marketing. Um, you know, advertisement. Also, go into like VR, uh, the interactive experience. So either that's on a website, we can rotate a model, or put on a headset and look around. Uh, but it's that polished photorealism output. So it's technical versus photorealism. And that's why there's two different applications here. Okay, so for the examples, first of all, I want, I want to talk about actually one of the uh, my favorite outputs from Composer is this guy right here. And so what we have um, is we have, this is an interactive, I call it an interactive um, parts list. It could be an assembly instructor. You can really do whatever, whatever you want with this. Uh, there's there's a lot of different ways we can utilize this. Uh, this is a vector output, which is math mathematical lines. This is like a, it's like a drawing almost, um, and it's a, a scalable, scalable vector graphics as opposed to a raster output, which is going to be pixelated. And we look at something like this and say, okay, well, you know, I got this this toy truck, and you know, I want to uh, assemble it or maintain it or whatever it is, change the batteries. And you can have some table of content to say, oh, I, want to, I want to do something. In this case, it's of oh, the assembly of, of this uh, rear differential. Um, just show us something off the model just to explain here. But um, still got that, kind of got a little nice little picture of the, the truck so I can always go back. It's like a back button. Um, but here it says, you know, after you're finished, 
with this assembly, this is what it looks like. It's a nice looking, you know, black and white vectorized drawing of that of that model. Here's all the parts that we need to do the assembly. Uh, if you needed tools, you could put that on here. Need a screwdriver, wrench, or whatever it is. You can see the quantity, bomb ideas, everything lights up as well. So if I mouse over something, uh, that part or that balloon or in the everything highlights accordingly so you know exactly what it is you're about to click on. And now if I say, you know what, I don't want to assemble this. I want to do the pre-assembly of this uh, this guy right here. So I can click on that and I can call an action. And I can say, hey, when I select this, what is this website going to do? Is it going to uh, open up an assembly? Is it going to play an animation? Is it going to uh, go you know, isolate a component? Is it going to show me an exploded view of that particular step, which that's what I chose to have that button do. Um, so this is what it looks like after assembly. Here's the tools required. Here, here's the build materials. And I can say, OK, cool. Uh, go to step one. All right, so I'm taking these components that are in green. After I assemble them, that's what it's going to look like. Step two, OK, I'm taking two additional components. That's what they are. This is what it's going to look like. You'll see that's, that's all it is. And it's real simple. There isn't a whole lot of complicated steps in order to create this sort of stuff. It's kind of those same, uh, we're going to take these, we're going to color them, we're going to put them together. Five or six steps, and you just repeat that for procedural content. Um, now we're going to take that subassembly, install it in. All right, two more parts, and we just go through the, the list until we finish and have that part completely assembled. And now we can go back to the, the main assembly. And so, subassembly, let's go ahead and start uh, the, the whole um, top level here. Or in this case, it's still sub for the whole assembly, but you, you get the point. Um, and that's it. So, we're going to assemble all these components, and boom, we got it all together. And they can have another step of installing that into the track and whatnot. So it's a really good example. And that is Composer, 100%. However, because these are just hyperlinks, I could have a nice rendering or animation or something out of Visualize. I could click a button and I could play that. Get a little ahead of the, of the, of the steps here. But uh, just so you guys are aware, you don't have to choose one or the other for publications. They do, they do, um, uh, they do mix. OK, so next one for uh, Composer is the step-by-step -step assembly instruction. And you, when you look at this, this is a PDF. And you look at this, it's the exact same imagery from that interactive parts list that I had. And so when you create this content, this goes for both Composer and Visualize. Once you create it and you put it all together, you can just say, hey, I want to output as a website. I want to output as a PDF. I want to output as a, a still image or whatever it is, a video. And so it's not like you have to do additional steps in order for to create these extra publications. You That's just how you're saving it at the very end. Uh, in this case, it's the exact same steps that we had. But I chose to save it as a PDF that I can print, that I can email to somebody. Maybe that person doesn't have access to the internet, so I don't want to send them an online version of the assembly instructions. I want them to have something on their iPad or whatever that device is that they can go through for that assembly. So that is what this one is for. And the last one on the list for a composer is, there it goes. Uh, it's the uh, inner, or I'm sorry, this is the step-by-step -step animation. And I wanted to show this to show the difference in animation between Visualize and, and Composer. So you look at this, um, it's procedural, um, and it add, it's actually taking exploded steps from SOLIDWORKS. And so I'll show that here in a little bit. We're actually going to take SOLIDWORKS, have an exploded view, that imports into Composer, and you can just save out the animation. And so, and it's very technical. You look at this, and you're not going to convince anybody this is a photo. It's a very technical rendering. But this animation, you can export from Composer in about 30 seconds, maybe 45 seconds. Uh, it's a very quick way to push out imagery because it's very technical in nature. It's not ray trace, it's not rendered, that sort of thing. Okay, now going on to the right side of the examples here for Visualize, we got that same animation, uh, but we open it up in Visualize and we got something that looks like this, a bit more polished, a bit more rendered. It's the exact same animation from SOLIDWORKS, but I've brought it into Visualize. I've added an environment. 
I've added some some lighting and spiced up a bit. But what I want to show you is I can pause this. I'm just going to pause it because it is a short animation, and I can look around the room. So it is a interactive VR experience. So if I were to put this on a VR headset, I could literally stand in the middle of this room, look around, and that can happen while the animation is going. I just pause it because it's like a five second animation. But if I show you, I can move over here and I can see you know, the TV, if there was anything going on behind me while I'm looking around, that I could also see that movement. So I had something you know, two or three minutes long, you can create this lifelike interact interactive experience. And this is all from Visualize, uh, Visualize Pro. So this is the SolidWorks Motion Study export to visualize, rendered out as an interactive video. Uh, with that said, we can just do uh, standard video as well. It doesn't have to be interactive. It's just showing the full you know, experience there. Okay, so going back to the examples, if I go to this guy here, this is going to be another video out of visualize. But really why I'm showing two videos here is because this one is the automatic output. Literally, I brought the model to visualize. I added a couple appearances. You can see the headlights and stuff, so I added that. And I literally just said, hey, save out a turntable animation. And just by a click of a button, you get this video here. And it shows really well the still imagery as well. It's just, you know, a video is just a bunch of still images. So if you wanted to just render out still images, we get something like this. And an image like you're seeing on screen right now, um, Visualize Standard could do this. Visualize Standard comes with SOLIDWORKS Pro and Premium. So you might already own Visualize Standard and don't even know it. And you can create stunning images just like you're seeing on screen um, with no additional purchases. So it's very possible that you might already have this. Okay. Uh, and then the last one on the list for Visualize, which is my favorite for Visualize because it doesn't require any special add in or plug in or player or device or browser right so this is really free which is incredible for a 3d model so you're looking at this this is a 3d model that i'm able to rotate around i'm on a website uh chrome is what i'm using right now it doesn't have to be chrome it could be internet explorer it could be firefox it could be you know uh anything mac it all it is is a series of JPEG images that are knitted together using a very simple JavaScript. And Visualize does all the work for you. So you just say, hey, I want to take this model. I'm going to save it out as a 360 image. And you can put this on a website that anybody with a, a smart device, a tablet, a phone, a computer, uh, uh, finger gestures, you can rotate it around. And you can view a, a model, photorealism, 360 degrees, without any of those limitations that you always experience with a rotatable 3D model. Because any 3D model, even a 3D PDF, you put that on your website and somebody who happens to not have Adobe Acrobat installed won't be able to view it. I know that most people have that, but there is a, a program that's required for that output. Where this one here is very, very free. So as I really love it. Okay, so that's defining the differences between Composer and Visualize and some examples of each. All right, so going on to the next part here, um, which we got a little sneak peek at there we go, is the, um, I just wanted, I'd like to always throw some customer stories in here. So, so this is coax helicopters, and um, really this is a, a good story about adopting uh, SOLIDWORKS and Composer. And so they um, were able to, I mean, I just love the comments directly from the customers. They really speak for themselves. So. Uh, years off development time, hundreds of thousand dollars of, in prototyping costs. So Composer acts like this sandbox. So you can bring in your SOLIDWORKS design and you can do all sorts of stuff with it without ever having to worry about messing with SOLIDWORKS whatsoever. And so if you have a group of engineers working in with in, within SOLIDWORKS on, on the design, of course, uh, then they're like, okay, well, this needs to go to tech comms or marketing or whatever that other department is that's going to be SOLIDWORKS visualize of course as well um, they can go in there they can create exploded views they can change colors uh, if you have various configurations in, in SOLIDWORKS they can actually swap out components look at things from different angles different um, uh, versions so different um, uh, you know uh, we want a different here a different blade a different landing device let's throw some wheels on or something like that you can do that all within Composer 
much, much faster than you can do it in any CAD tool because it is a much lighter weight model. You're not doing any CAD designs. You're not cutting holes and things and making things uh, longer or anything like that, but you can take existing models, swap them out, and get prototypes, virtual prototypes, a lot faster than you can get physical prototypes. So really good story there. Um, the one for Visualize I have is Zodiac Aerospace. Um, this was great. Uh, and, and one of my, my most favorite uh, customer stories with, with Visualize because they had an issue of going from you know a, a concept so they'd have a meeting and say okay well what if we what if we uh, change the color a little bit what if we reorganize the, the seating or the displays or whatever it was um, but then trying to have an image of that to show uh, whoever they need to show um, regardless if that was investors or prospects whatever it was uh, to say, hey, this is what we're thinking, uh, would take days, weeks, months to create that prototype. But Visualize, they're able to go in the same day from a concept to a rendered image um, to, to just to show that idea. So a really good example there. So that's, um, that's it for the case studies and the PowerPoint. So let me jump into the software and we'll get into the good stuff. All right, so here I have SolidWorks. Uh, there's nothing, you know, nothing particular um, special about this model. Just a, a SolidWorks design 3D model, uh, much like I'm sure most of you are creating today. We've got our assembly structures, uh, sub-assemblies, parts, whatnot. Now, this might be some of you, um, but if I go uh, to my configurations, we can actually create what's called an exploded view. And so if you whoop, drop that down to show exploded view. Um, so if you're unfamiliar with what an explode view is, uh, it's an ability to, in SOLIDWORKS, to take an assembly, we can grab the individual components, pull them apart, and create an exploded view, something like that. There's also what's called uh, motion study or animation uh, inside of SOLIDWORKS. And this here uh, is something I actually uh, found out, you know, just, I don't know, a couple years ago, uh, that we can actually import that exploded view into the animated timeline, which is really, really slick. And by doing that, we can then push it to both Composer and Visualize. So once I found this out, I was like, yeah, you know what? I got to show that. So that's, that's what we're doing today. Um, so I can take that explode view, uh, just a real simple explode view done, done in SolidWorks here, and I can import that into the timeline. Now it's just, it's called the Animation Wizard, and I have a few different ways I can bring that in. I'll just do an explode. Sure, five seconds sounds good. And I can bring in that motion, or I'm sorry, that explode view into the animation. And now we have an animated view of that explode, just like that. Now with Visualize, when you uh, when you install Visualize, uh, it will also put this add-in for SolidWorks, and that add-in has an export. So by clicking a single button, well, I guess two buttons, I got to choose the motion study. Uh, what that's going to do as it's going to take this entire uh, model, all the components, all the materials, even the, the cameras, um, uh, appearances, coloring, uh, model positions, the entire timeline, which you can see it's processing now, it's gonna take everything that's in SolidWorks here, nicely package it up, send it to visualize and open. Uh, and just so everybody knows, uh, anything, kind of that, that line in the sand between Visualize Standard and Visualize Professional is motion. Uh, there's a couple other things, um, but really that's the big one. If you have static images, good chance you can create whatever you need in, in Standard. Uh, once you get into animation, VR, rotating a model on a website, that's all the professional tools. And uh, since this is animation, this would be professional here. And so once this loads, what it's going to bring in is um, it's going to be my, my model, and it's going to bring in any appearances that I created in SolidWorks. Now, once we have it in Visualize, um, which we're done here, we can simply render this out. So I can say, okay, I want to take this right now, and I'm just going to go, hey, tools, render, and we're going to um, say, hey, we're, we want a video. We want, a, we want an image. We want a 3D model. Uh, we can do any of that right now. And what it's going to do is it's going to take the current status of everything that came over from SolidWorks and use all of those attributes for that rendering. Or I could take this a couple steps further. I can add an environment. I can do some custom lighting, 
bring in some materials, um, really spice it up, some camera filters and things like that, and I can make it look that much better. But it's not absolutely necessary because the direct input is actually re really good. Uh, and we'll show both here. So, but before I get into that, I wanna show uh, one really cool additional tool. Um, it's called Visualize Boost. Uh, Visualize Boost only works with Visualize Pro. When you purchase Visualize Pro, you get Boost with it. You get a license of that. Uh, Boost is also sold separately. It's pretty inexpensive, uh, but you do get a, a license of that with Visualize Pro. And every license of Boost you have, you can add an additional computer to help you render your your your, your project. And just to show this, I got I got my server up and running here. So this is just a, a simple um, Google. Uh, uh, remote desktop showing my server and right now it's just waiting it's standing by no activity and if I connect to it I'll just go here and connect to it real quick it's, um, just want to make sure that's the right one so scanning my network and so this is this is exactly how you set it up so with boost any computer you you put that on on your network uh, a quick scan within visualize will detect it and we can just go in here and we can say hey when I want to connect to that or let's say you had five, you can cluster them together. You can connect to all five and use the power from all five of those machines. That's the, the processor, CPU, and the, and the graphics card, GPU. Utilize both of those for every machine clustered together. It's really, really sweet. Okay, so that's it, we're connected. And now when I tell this to render live, it's going to connect to my server, which is happening right now. You see this gibberish in the background, just showing me the, uh, the connection. We've got a session going on. Right now, the GPU load is, is jumping up because it's starting to render just like that. And that easily, we got a live rendering. So now I can see what this is going to look like before I even save out a rendering. Zoom in and something like that. You can see as soon as I let go of the mouse, I've got our passes. Right now I have it set just to 100, um, just for the preview mode, and I can see what that's gonna look like before I actually render it out. Now, if anybody is curious what I have going on here, on the server, I have two 10, GTX 1070 Ti cards, which is actually, now it's a little bit older technology. We got the RTX series out now. Um, so this is a little bit older technology. It is technically gaming technology, but utilizing those two cards, you can see how fast this is and I don't have to use up the resources on my current machine, because right now I have Composer open, I got SolidWorks open, I have Visualize open, I got a PowerPoint open, I got a web browser. I don't need to be hogging my machine up with, with rendering as well. So I can put that off on another machine, use it here, and it's really slick. Uh, one other thing before we start throwing some, some images on this guy, is I wanna show this what's called the denoiser. So if you look, I notice right now, you see how smooth that is? And I'm at about 50 passes. So this denoiser, SolidWorks recently came out with this. And what it does is it removes that noise. So right now I, I turn the denoiser off. This is going to stop at 100 passes. And even at 100 passes, you see that noise going on right there. You can see that kind of pixelation. Now if I toggle that on, do the same thing. That noise, I mean, it's already almost gone. And I'm at 30, 20, you know, right, right between 20 and 30, actually remove that. So the denoiser technically doesn't make the renders uh, render any faster. You still specify, hey, you want to do 100 passes or whatever. It's going to take the amount of time. However, you can create renderings with less passes, which will save time. And what I found, it's about 10 times. So uh, passes at, uh, let's say it's 20. So passes at uh, 20, 20 passes with denoiser on is about 100 passes with it off. So it will save a ton of time, which really sets this tool apart from any other render out there in the market. So that's a really great addition they added there. Okay, uh, let's poke around a little bit here before we get into to Composer. And what I like to do is just to show um, what are called emissives. And then we're also uh, change the background, a little bit of lighting as well. So if I go to um, my libraries here, you'll see that there's a local and cloud library. So SolidWorks has opened up visualize to the community to the cloud uh, which is really cool so you install you get a bunch of stuff you go to cloud you get additional stuff and once you use those items uh, they're now on your machine and in the future you don't have to download them 
Um, for instance, uh, if I go to Mrs. These, anything with a checkbox next to it, the stuff that I've used already, anything like Lightning, I've never used it. I'd have to download it, it just takes a minute. Um, but let me use, uh, let's do the halogen. So if I go and I say, okay, you know, you can get that preview before you apply it. So I'm gonna apply a halogen light to that light there. Let's put another one there and then, and yeah, this red lighting here. Uh, here's a red light, that works. Actually red LED, yeah, that's better. I want to add that to maybe like this guy here. I'll just throw in one. I could throw in a bunch of those guys up there. Yeah, let's put them down here as well, just to show some some cool effects. You know what? It feels weird not adding it to the other side, so let's add it there as well. Okay, something like that. And so now I went ahead and I applied those, and you'll see that it hasn't really changed yet. These are emissive, but right now I'm in that preview mode. So I'm gonna go switch back to my, my you know, preview mode, um, which is to connect back to the server, and I get something like that. And they still don't look that impressive, right? I mean, sure, they, they look like they're glowing a little bit, but they're not really glowing. So I'm gonna go to my cameras, and here, uh, and you know, with the cameras here, it's, it's just like a real camera in real life, and that is really what Visualize is all about. It's like it's like a virtual version of a DSLR camera, where I can say, you know what, let's, let's uh, change my lens. So here's my aspect ratio there. Let's go ahead and put that in like a more of a 16 by nine, so more of a video format. Um, have different kinds of uh, cameras, so orthographic is going to have no perspective, and of course we have perspective. And then if I change that to 360, it's the exact same thing as those Google vans you see driving by with the 360 camera that take the street view. And so you can do that and visualize as well. If you have a full environment, you can put a 360 camera in there, make an animation, you can actually make a street view of that or virtual experience, whatever you want to do. Okay, um, depth of field, this is pretty cool. Let's turn it on. And I'll just say, you know what, let's focus on like that headlight right there. And then the rest, you'll kind of see it right there. So this is the most focus. And now as it gets away from the camera, it gets a little bit out of focus. And the last thing I want to do is I want to turn on what's called Bloom. Um, and what Bloom is going to do is something like that. So it's just a little check of a bo box and we're going to adjust the intensity if we want to change that. But that really brings that image to life. So you get something like this. And now those headlights, those LEDs, they, they have more of that look to it. I still don't like how that's a little bit blurry right there. So I'm just going to go back to that depth of field and um, I want to pick like that. Yeah, that's a bit put that better, better there. And I could adjust the settings. But just those, I mean, what, took a minute and a half, drag and drop a few things in, changes a couple of different settings on the camera, and all of a sudden we have a completely different image. And that's what I'm saying. Like, you can bring this in from SOLIDWORKS, and it looks great, but spend five minutes in there, and it looks that much better. Um, if I didn't want to have, you know, this, uh, this white background, um, there's also environments that come with the software. And you'll see I'm in the cloud here. A lot of things I haven't used yet. This is constantly being added to. These are what's called the HDRI images, high dynamic range images. Um, it's funny that, yeah, the HDRI images, right? But that I in the HDRI stands for images. So um, if you're doing a Google search, just keep that in mind. But let's choose, ah, uh, sure, Fall Street. Why not put this thing in on a road in the fall? Keep in mind, this is a toy truck, so it's not going to be. Um, the size of the road, but uh, uh, so it's going to be a little small. Just to keep that in mind. Okay. I could zoom in and I can make it look like it's a little bit bigger. But really, you look around. This is a 360 image. It looks like it's floating right now. That's only because I'm in preview mode. As soon as I set it to um, uh, to render, um, it will look a lot more realistic. But before I do that, I want to take this scene and I'm going to rotate it because I want this guy actually on the street something like that and now let's take a look at it rendered there we go something like that it's processing the passes looks like that depth of field is messing with me a little bit so i'll just go back there adjust that to point there
just have it re render. There we go. Something like that. And now we could render this out as an image or whatever we want. And to do that, I mean, it's as simple as, you know, like I was saying, once you have everything put together, it's a matter of saying, how do I want to render this out? So now that I, I know it looks the way I want, I can go, hey, I wanna, I wanna go here and I'm just gonna save out a simple, you know, JPEG image or a PNG or bitmap or whatever I want that to be and have a single image. Or I can come down here and I can say, um, well, I want that to be an interactive image. So I'm gonna render that out by selecting this guy. I have some additional options here to say, how many, how many passes do you want? Do you want to be able to look at the bottom, uh, how far up to the top, like what are your angle const angle uh, constraints do you want this to be at? So when you finally output it, what it's going to look like, uh, it's just simple, you know, say, no, I want to do in 360 and then save that out as an interactive image. Uh, then there's what are called, what's called panoramic, which is uh, an interactive image is uh, looking from the outside in, rotating the model. Panoramic is the opposite. So you're looking from the inside out, you're able to look around the room. That was that, that 360 degree uh, video that I showed. Um, also, really good to point out, you can render all cameras and all configurations. So let's say that you had uh, this, this truck, you had, uh, oh, we're gonna offer 13 different color schemes. And we're gonna have uh, one version with a trailer on the back, one version with a boat on the back, one version um, with, um, I don't know, it's going to be the Barbie version for the girls or whatever it is, you know, um, it doesn't matter. And what you can do is you can create all those configurations and all those different camera angles. And I can say, hey, I want to render all configurations, uh, set it, forget it, come back when it's done. And all of those configurations are ready. The best thing about that is you can have the same camera angle for every single one. So if you're putting that on a website and you're creating something that's like customizable. So if you're changing the color, what it's going to do is it's going to keep that that image perfectly still uh, still so when you you go to that next color option uh, it will change without changing the an camera angle and it will just look like the colors adjusting so you go to those websites that you can customize your product it's probably what's happening and visualize makes it easy if i wanted a, a video i come down here and say oh you know what now we're going to take all of those same settings but i'm going to render out a video you can do a standard video or a 360 video this guy down here is what's called a turntable. Again, this is all, this guy here is all automated for the turntable. It's all pre-programmed. All you have to do is start, say, start turntable rendering. You get that video that I showed where the, 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 the truck just spun on a 360 platform, something like that. And that is Visualize. Okay, now let's dive, let's switch gears a little bit here and dive into Composer. And uh, just for time time constraints, uh, it takes uh, time that it takes three and a half minutes um, to bring this model uh, in from SolidWorks into Composer. Once you bring to Composer, you get exactly what you see on screen here. So nothing has been done to this Composer document. Uh, it's just brought in that SolidWorks assembly directly, and it brings in all of those steps from that exploded view. Now, once you're in Composer, and you say, okay, well, what do we want to do with this? And just to show you the quick uh, UI of Composer, just like we did in Visualize there. Um, and you know what, I, I, I um, didn't show that in Visualize, but Visualize there also is an assembly tree. Um, so you can look at the individual components, sub-assemblies, and, and make selections and things like that. Um, so in that case, Visualize and Composer work much the same way, where I could say, oh, well, you know, this, this cab portion, I want to uh, isolate that, take a look at that independently. So something like like that we could do and you'll see that in composer it's like it's like playing in a sandbox i can isolate some components you know, i'm just a quick change here i can say oh you know this is uh i'm going to go ahead and make this uh transparent or something like that or change the color of that component or whatever i want it to do and i could hit this button right there and i uh, saves a spot it's like it's like playing a video game and hitting save you can always go back to that stage right there. Now, when I go to any of these other, what are called views, I, I call them steps uh, in the program, they're called views. You know, we can come in here, look at this at any different angle we want. What I did in this step here is saved. So it's gonna recreate that, uh, that isolated view and that opacity that I set. And this is what I was referring to as this composer, you can really um, play with the model, create explodes, do whatever you want. 
without worrying that at any given time you're going to mess up that CAD design. And that allows you to create those virtual prototypes and every all the imagery and stuff you need for marketing, tech pubs, um, assembly, operation, things like that. All right, so let's go ahead and let's actually create a um, screen exploded view. Let's create a quick build, build materials. And so what I'll do is I just want to say, okay, well, I, just, I want to select a sub assembly for this. And what do I what do I want to select? Um, I don't know, let's check on, click on this motor. Uh, you'll see that it highlights in the tree. I just go up the tree and I say, okay, well, okay, that's that that electric motor there. That's part of another assembly. I can go back up the tree. Okay, well, that gives me the entire assembly. So now I just want to go ahead and isolate that. Something like that. Uh, click the button here. I can tell to go back what's like, it's called home, right? So you're just saying, hey, take everything. We want to uh, restore um, those components back to where they went. And you'll see when I, when I take something and I pull it away from the model, if I click on it, I can tell to go back to where it came. And we have this tool called copy transformation. I'll just show that real quick before, I just want to pull, pull this apart and show how we put it back together, but I can grab everything and I can say, you know what, however those parts move, move with them. And I can just move them out like that, which is a really cool tool, which I'll, I'll go into a little bit more detail here in a second. So I wanted to then pull this apart, create a build materials. I simply click on a component, I have my arrows here, I can pull it out. If that component is made up of additional components, like this, um, and I didn't want to explode the motor, I wanted to keep those together, what I could do is I could say, you know what, let's uh, move that out, and then I can select these components, I could do a copy transformation and move it over. And the greatest thing about that tool, and actually in Composer for as far as features goes, it's my most favorite tool, because it saves so much time opposed to any way to do exploded views. Um, so any other application out there, and a lot of CAD tools and whatnot, I mean, you can create exploded views. In Visualize, you can create exploded views. But Composer makes it quick, it makes it easy. Because what we can do is we can just say, all right, well, there's the motor. You know what, I also had this washer. Um, I just want that to be part of the motor. So I can go ahead and say copy transformation, click that, and it moved there as if it moved there from the very beginning, and it goes right into location. So say, for instance, you have a door, and you can select the door, you can say, hey, there's a, there's a hinge on this door. You can you can select the, the hinge for the rotation, open that door, move on, do other things. Six months later, go, oh shoot, I forgot to grab the, the doorknob. You can grab the doorknob, you can say copy transformation, you click on the door, and the doorknob moves with the door as if you moved it there from the very beginning. So you don't have to undo, try to fix things. Um, I, I tried to uh, um, challenge uh, anybody I train in Composer to say, hey, don't ever hit the undo button. See if you can do it another way. And 99% of the time, there's a better way than hitting undo because of all the great little tools in here to allow you to do so. Like this guy here, copy transformation. You'll see I use it all the time. There's a little gear in there. Oh, I should have moved that as well. So when I start using the software, I don't even worry about selecting all the parts at first because it doesn't matter because you can always go back in and select the parts you need. All right, we've taken the motor, we've got it out. I'm going to do the same thing. We'll just do a couple components here, throw some build materials on, call it good. All right, so there's that plate. Now, I see there's some screws that I wanted to pull out as well. So much like with SolidWorks, if I select from left to right, I have a box, I can, and I just nick a model, I can select it. If I go from right to left, I have to put that model in the box, that part in that, that, that bounding box there. And so that allows me to make more finite selections like that. So I can say, oh, I just want that part. Instead, if I went this way, it's going to select everything. So when I see a bunch of screws like that, what I'll do is I'll just grab a box from right to left, select those screws, select it some other stuff. I don't really care that much about. Let's do that copy transformation. Let's move out. Um, we'll just drag that a little further. And what I mean by I don't care that much about selecting those individual components is at any given time, I can say, you know what? I didn't want to grab those. All I wanted to do was grab um, these bolts so I can select those components and I can tell them to go back home. Just like that. Oh, one more, select that guy. Actually, I'm gonna move that guy with that plate. Let's say it's attached. Yeah, something like that. So now that 
be sick, explode. And we can always go back in, kind of rearrange things just to make it look a little bit nicer. I'll pull that guy back a little bit right there, just like that. So you'll see that as I'm going through and creating these explodes, I'll hit this button and I'll just save my spot. And that actually creates an animation. So now I actually have an animation automatically because it animates them step to step. So I said, okay, here's my truck. I want to isolate this, uh, this um, gearbox with the motor and you see it animating out. And then I go to my first step there and it shows me that animation, that movement as well. Perfect. Okay, now I'm going to select all these components that I have. Oh, I had to grab that little guy right there. So I'm just gonna click it again to deselect it. Oh, this is a really good time to show this. I can hit tab and I can just jump through components and I can make these selections or selections there, which is just outstanding. Um, I was saying there's a handful of little tricks. Once you learn them, this program is like, it's unbeatable for just the speed you can create things like this. Cause you know, I can just, uh, tab through things, hide things, make selections inside, and just makes it simple. Okay, uh, so let's go ahead and create a build material for these selected components. So to do that, we got what's called a workshop, and we just have some criteria to say, hey, you know, how do, how do I want to do this? Well, we're gonna compare geometry. Um, how do I want the formatting, you know, numeric, alphabetic? How do I want the callouts? Well, I want one callout per, per component, so we got that, and we just, Bomb IDs. Boom, we have our IDs now all set. Now, if in SOLIDWORKS, if I had a build materials at the assembly level, uh, so an assembly level bomb, that will import Composer into Composer, and we can have all the balloons and everything. That way, if your SOLIDWORKS drawing is based off of that assembly bomb, Composer uh, bomb IDs will have the exact same numbering. Uh, so that's a really good workflow to work that way. Uh, if you don't need that in SOLIDWORKS or don't do that in SOLIDWORKS, you can always do what I just did here and create those build, build materials right within uh, Composer. So now I just say, okay, well, I have a little button here. This is create the callouts. So I don't have to go through and call out every single one and try and accidentally miss something, right? Um, so I have, okay, I have all these balloons here for that guy. Well, I'm not a big fan of that. I say, okay, well, I want my build materials, uh, bomb IDs for these components. That's fine. Uh, but this one should be an assembly, so I can easily fix that. So let's go ahead and just say um, we got our we got our assembly, which is this guy here. Boom. And I just want to say, hey, this component is going to have a bomb ID, and just give it something. We'll give it a hundred, just like that. And so now what I can do is I can create another callout based off of this one. Also, uh, check this out. I'll change that 13 here in a second. But if I said that these balloons are the larger, maybe they're different color, different format, different font, whatever I need, uh, and then I create something custom like this 13, which is basing off the shell right now, I can eye drop tool any of those and it will copy those, those, those uh, formatting properties, which is pretty slick. Um, right now it's pointing at the shell. So I just say, okay, well, I don't want it to point at the shell. I want it to point at the assembly just like that and then these guys here i'm just going to go ahead and hide them because i don't need them anymore and then that will help clean up the uh, uh the build materials as well sorry just a little auto save set right there oh, let's go ahead and hide those okay well uh just bear with me one second i, have, I think i have too many things open right now so Jump back in there. Um, so basically what I did is I, I went ahead and um, isolated those components, create the bomb IDs, and, uh, and that will allow me to create that output I did that has the, uh, the build materials with uh, the interactive buttons. So you click on any of those buttons and you can just uh, uh, navigate through those different steps here. So let's jump back into this guy. So one great thing I love about Composer is I'm not even going to open that. You see where it says there's an automatic load file? I'm not going to use that. What I'm going to use is I'm going to get right back to where it was in like 30 seconds. So just to show how quick something like this. So as everybody knows right now, I had a little, little crash there. But I can get back to where I was. Simple. So if I take all these components, 
isolate them, create my view. I should have saved that file, which is my fault. Um, say, okay, well, let's take all these parts, yep, all of these parts, and I'm going to put them back to where they came from. And now, create my view. And before I had a few different components here, so I'll take those same components, drag them out. This guy, drag it out as well. And let's go ahead and put the, uh, yeah, let's take this guy here. We'll move it out a little bit further. Something like that. And then what I did previously is I just went ahead and, oh, so it sounds like my screen might have froze here. Okay, it looks like we're back. So I think we just had a little bit of a technical hiccup there. I'm not sure when the, when the screen froze and when it came back, but hopefully everybody can see what I'm doing here. Uh, but yeah, so we'll just take these components, do a quick, uh, Quick little translation back here, and then let's make a quick build materials. So let's wrap this up. So we'll go to our build materials. Let's go ahead and generate those BOM IDs, create those callouts. What I was trying to do is I was trying to show this BOM table here. So what we have is we have the ability to also have the BOM table directly inside of Composer here. And this can be set separately. I know sometimes you have like your bomb table separate from the drawings and stuff like that. So we can create this in two different views. In this case, I'm just gonna go ahead and put in all the same kind of interface. Um, that way we can just see, okay, here's my, here's all my bomb items, here's my balloons. And I can quickly create that build materials based off of that. And then for that, uh, that's procedural step-by-step, step, it can say, hey, when, when somebody clicks on this, it's going to, bring up another view, bring up another um, view, whatever it is that we want. And just to show that real quick is, let's go ahead and grab, oh, we'll just grab a couple components. Actually, let's grab this guy here. We'll make a new set of that for the explode. And if I say, hey, when somebody clicks on this model, I want it to link to something. And what I want it to link to is I'm gonna to link to a different uh, view, a different page, an animation, whatever it is that I, I want to do. And in this case, it's gonna be that one view I just made. And so now when somebody is interactively um, in Composer or in that FPG output and they click on something, it brings, that to the, it brings them automatically to that next step. And that's how that is created. And that is, that is Composer. Okay, so I wanna open up for questions here. Uh, so if anybody, is, uh, um, you know, if anybody's seen anything that you might want additional, you know, details on, jump in a little bit more um, questions or anything like that, just let me know. Uh, it's really the, the difference between the two applications. The whole purpose of this is just to define those, those, those differences. So again, Composer is very technical. That's for creating things like build materials, um, assembly instructions, technical operations and even, even animations, but it's still very technical. And you get in the visualized portion of that, and that's polished marketing. Um, it's very, you know, it's very um, uh, rendered opposed to that technical output. Um, do a lot of the same thing, but for two different reasons. So we'll have, go ahead and wrap it up here and keep this open just for a few minutes if anybody has any questions, so ask now. And then once, uh, um, we get any questions in, I'll, I'll chime back in and, and uh, answer those. Uh, other than that, uh, thank you everybody for joining.